Well, good evening, and uh, thank you for joining us tonight for our live stream service here at Southwood Baptist Church, and uh, had a great morning in our morning service, so grateful for the number of people that came this morning, and a good crowd, had a lady join the church, Miss Linda joined the church this morning, and thankful for her, and uh, good special music, and 
Lord, just really blessed. And I hope those of you that watched it were uh, blessed by it. I know the p- folks that were here in the auditorium were blessed by it. And uh, we're looking forward to a good service tonight. And uh, so let's go ahead and get ready to sing. And Brother Dennis, give us our first song. I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm daily feasting on His precious Word. No matter what comes today, I'll trust the Lord. He is the way. Keep on forward by faith. Make sure your mic's plugged in tight. It's red. That means he's got a low battery. So turn your mic on right there, and you can use the, the, the mic there for the, during the special. And we all go right. on to our next song. We'll just do that, all right? Dwelling in Beulah Land, I'm dwelling in Beulah Land. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know the sins of earth beset on every hand. Doubt and fear and things of earth in vain to me are calling. Glad thee shall move me from Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky. Praise God, I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply. For I am dwelling in Beulah land. Viewing here the works of God, I sink in contemplation. Hearing now his blessed voice, I see the way he planned. Dwelling in the Spirit here, I learn a full salvation. Gladly will I tarry in Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky. Praise God, I'm drinking. At the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh, yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply. For I am dwelling in Beulah Let's do the chorus one more time. And you that are at home, really yell out, praise God. Make the neighbors wonder what's going on in your neighborhood. <laughs> All right, on the chorus. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky. Praise God, I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh, yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply, for I am dwelling in Beulah Man, that was a great song. I love singing Dwelling in Beulah Land. That, that is a great song. Now, when we all get back here again together, we need to sing that with everybody in the auditorium. And I think we'll, be, we'll enjoy it a lot more. Well, let's open our service with a word of prayer and ask his blessing on our service. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in God's house tonight. Lord, we're thankful for a good service this morning. Thank you for speaking to hearts. And Lord, I pray that you, you'd meet with us here tonight. Pray that everything we do here tonight might honor and please you, and that your name would be exalted. And Lord, I pray that you would be with those that have special needs and are, have physical needs tonight. And I pray that you would just give strength and encourage each other tonight. Would you uh, bless the service? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, let me just say this. I just got a text just a few moments ago from Brother uh, 
Jerry and uh, Miss Linda has gone home and they've they put a pick line there for her medications and uh, but if you would pray for Miss Linda uh, adjusting back to home and uh, actually pray for Brother Jerry he's the he's the the chief bottle washer nurse head nurse uh, having to take care of her uh, her sister and brother-in-law. And just pray for him as he's trying to get all of this done, and they all have a lot of physical needs right now, and they need a touch from the Lord. So if you would uh, pray for Brother Jerry and uh, and pray for one another. You know, we had some folks here that were here last week. They weren't able to be here this, this week. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I need you really to be praying one for another. Uh, you know, if you're not feeling well, you know, coming is not important you know you can uh, continue to watch on live stream and uh, you know we want you to stay well we want you to stay healthy but uh, when we are opening things up a little bit at a time and giving opportunity to be in God's house and those of you that have had the privilege of coming already you realize how much you've missed it and how important it is and then matter of fact some of you that haven't been able to be here because of physical issues, you realize how much you miss it and want to be in God's house. And I just want you to know we're praying for you, and we want you to be here as soon as you can be. But, uh, you know, again, you don't, have to, you don't have to force it. You don't have to push it. And, uh, uh, but uh, just stay faithful and stay uh, looking unto Jesus. And that's the key right there. Uh, let me just remind you, tonight at the end of the service, we'll have our call in for uh, for our uh, testimony time, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And uh, if you, you want to write the number now, down now, you can do that. And uh, we'll be able to uh, connect with you uh, at the uh, end of the service, and people will be able to hear you as you give testimony. And uh, so we want to encourage you to be prepared to do that so that right at the end of the service we can uh, start doing that. Then Wednesday night, we are going to have in-person services, and uh, we're going to have folks here, and uh, the building will be prepared and ready for everyone to come. And now we're, we're not doing any youth meetings or kids' meetings or anything like that. We'll just meet here in the auditorium. And, uh, you know, even on Sunday morning, we've had kids in the auditorium. It's just like the old days. You know, we don't, it's no big deal. When baby gets you know, starts whimpering or crying, and it's just not a big deal. Doesn't bother me a bit. I've preached in children's church for many years, so I, I, those things don't even phase me. And, uh, and hopefully it doesn't phase you all too much. And uh, we just enjoy being in God's house. And, uh, but Wednesday night, we'll look at our study in First Peter, Stand Firm, and uh, continue that study. It's been a great study so far. I'm enjoying it, and I hope that by me enjoying it, it's, it's uh, coming across to you, and you're enjoying it as well. And then coming up in a couple of weeks on Sunday night, the uh, Voices of Revival from Commonwealth Baptist College in uh, Lexington, Kentucky will be with us. Uh, they'll be singing for us, presenting the college, and uh, uh, then they'll be speaking for us. It'll be a good service. And if you know young people, teenagers uh, that are thinking of college, even down the road, maybe two, three years from now, they need to be in God's house. They need to be here for this, and they need to be exposed to young people. I am a firm believer in being trained in Christian colleges. And, uh, you know, you think about it, if, uh, uh, if you're doing exactly what God wants you to do, that's where he's going to send you he is not going to let you, he's not going to send you into the seat of the scornful uh, there's a lot of folks that don't have that opinion and that's okay I'm just going to tell you what my opinion is I have scripture to back mine up and uh, you know Psalm 1 is still there blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of ungodly professors in our, in our universities today, and uh, Christian young people have no business sitting under them. And I've seen it just uh, destroy 
Christian young people by doing so. And so I, I always encourage going to a Christian college and uh, being exposed to good teaching and godly teaching. You say, well, Bible college is just for preachers. No, it's not. Uh, my wife went to Bible college, and she's not a preacher. And uh, it's not just for preachers. It's for Christians. And uh, so uh, let me encourage you to get young people here so they can be here. We've had West Coast Baptist College here before. We've had Ambassador Baptist College here before. And uh, always provide great music and uh, um, and a good time of fellowship around God's Word. So we're looking forward to that on uh, June 7th, that's Sunday night at 6 o'clock. All right, let's see. Brother Dennis, it's time for another song. Let's sing Sweet Beulah Land. It's not Sweet Beulah Land, it's just called Beulah Land, but you know the song. I've, I've reached the land of joy divine, and all its riches freely mine. Here shines a dim, one blissful day, for all my night has passed away. Oh, Beulah Land, sweet Beulah Land, as on the highest mount I stand, I look away across the sea. Where mansions are prepared for me And view the shining glory shore My and my home forevermore The zephyr seem to flow to me Sweet sounds of heaven's melody As angels with the white robe throne Join in the sweet Redemption song. Oh, Beulah Land, sweet Beulah Land, as on the highest mount I stand, I look away across the sea where mansions are prepared for me, and view the shining glory shore, my and my home Thank you, Brother Dennis. That was a good song. That's an old song. And I hope you all remembered it and were able to sing along with us. Well, it's time for our offering. And uh, I'm going to ask my ushers to come. And we'll uh, take up an offering here. And uh, you give as unto the Lord. And you have different ways that you can do it there at home. You can log on to our website and click on online giving. Be able to go there and go to the uh, secure website. And uh, that'll, you'll be able to give that way. Or you can text to give. Text SBC Tallahassee, $0 amount to 73256. And uh, you'll be taken to a secure website to give. And I want to thank you again, once again, for be just being faithful in your giving. And uh, I know God will bless you for it. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing on our offering tonight. Father, thank you for another opportunity we have to give. Lord, I pray that you'd bless each gift that's given. And Lord, it's, that it be used to further the gospel and uh, be able to reach more people for the cause of Christ. Would you bless? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Well, tomorrow's Memorial Day, and one song we didn't sing this morning, so I thought we'd sing it tonight. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. Let's sing it together. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. Of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom bring. Our fathers, God, to the author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. Amen love America. I love the country that we live in. I'm thankful that I was born here. And after going to other countries, I am so thankful to be an American. There's been times that I've actually wanted to get down and kiss the ground when I came back here. Love America. And I hope you do too. And tomorrow as we honor those who have given the supreme sacrifice, let's not forget those things. And uh, don't forget our freedom. Well, if you would, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 1, and uh, we'll be getting into that in just a few moments, but before we do, Quartet has a song for us, Who Can Do Anything? Who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, pleads for us and always will. Who was a dying yet lives still, nobody but my Lord. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything, nobody but my Lord and Master. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything, nobody but my Lord. Who makes us happy though we may be sad, loves us even though we're bad. Who answers prayers and makes us glad, nobody but my Lord. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything, Nobody but my Lord and Master Who can do, who can do, who can do anything Nobody but my Lord Who was it hung upon a tree Suffered shame for you and me Who was it died to make us free Nobody but my Lord who owns a mansion in the sky? Share it with us by and by. Take us to his home on high. Nobody but my Lord. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord and Master. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord and Master. Who can do, who can do, who can do anything? Nobody but my Lord. Who can do, who can do, who can do? Man. Well, you have your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 is where we're at. We'll begin reading in verse number 10. 
Verse number 10, Now I beseech you, that, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfect, joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto men of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am, a, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have had baptized in mine own name, and I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word, and would you pray with me? Father, thank you for good music tonight. Thank you for the opportunity we have to just gather together, even though it's live stream, and looking forward to the time where we can all meet together in all of our services, and Lord, just getting things back to some semblance of normal. Pray that you'd bless now as we look into your word. I pray that uh, you would meet with us here tonight. And Lord, I pray that... Uh, your grace and your mercy will be shown tonight from your word. Thank you for the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, last week we started the, uh, the series in the book of 1 Corinthians. And, uh, you know, we've, we're talking about it. The, the theme, I guess, of the book is called to be saints. We're all called to be saints, you know, as you think about it. We're all saints. The moment we get saved, we become a saint. Uh, we don't have to wait 400 years and be canonized and all of that stuff to become a saint. But, uh, you know, right here in this building, we've got, uh, you know, we've got St. James. And uh, we've got St. Greg. That's a new one. We haven't heard that one before. You know, St. Kathy is an interesting one, too. But, you know, we have those and uh, we, because we're saved. And because we're saved, we're saints. And last week we looked at some, our standing in Christ and how we are, where we stand in him. And we stand as a, uh, because we're called of God. That was the first point last week. We're called of God. We're called to be an assembly. And, and as the, the uh, biblical the Greek word for that is ekklesia, which is, means assembly. And we are called out. We are a called out assembly. And then we're given the grace of God. And I'm thankful for the grace of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, that is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I'm thankful for the grace of God. I, I, I'm, I'm appreciative. I'm grateful for the grace every single day. Because I know who I am, and if you're honest with yourself, you know who you are, and you need to be thankful for the grace of God, too. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, where would we be today? And uh, so we're thankful that we've been given the grace of God. Then we're also gifted, and we're gonna, it's, it's interesting, in the book of 1 Corinthians, later on in the series, we're going to look at the different gifts that God has given to us, and uh, we have been gifted, and it is such a blessing to be able to do what we've been doing through the, this coronavirus uh, pandemic. We've been able to continue our services. Why? Because of gifted people. And God has given people gifts and abilities to uh, do different things. And we've been able to continue these things. We've been able to continue worshiping the Lord, even though it's on live stream. Uh, I can just think of what it, might, what it would have been like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I mean, 15 years ago, I don't even know if we had high-speed internet. We were probably all uh, still on the dial-up, and, you know, you get your email, you've got mail, and all that kind of stuff, you know, the, the old uh, AOL and, 
you know, listening to that, that screech when you log on and all that, you know. But today we have live stream, and, you know, we complain because it doesn't take a, a, a millisecond to come up on our screen. We just, we just want stuff so fast now. But because of that, we're able to live stream. You all are able to sit there. Some of you can watch the service on your tablet, or you can take that tablet and you can shove it up to your big screen on your, in your living room, or you're able to pull up YouTube on the, uh, in your living room. Uh, you're able to look there on your laptop or on your computer. You know, we live in an amazing day. But all of that is because of gifted people, the gifts that God has given to different people. This church functions because of gifted people, people that have different talents. And then we rest in the hope of God. We, have, we know where we're going. We know how this is all going to end. And we can rest in the hope that God has given us that one day we will be with him. And I'm looking forward to that day. We also, as a New Testament church, have this wonderful standing. And it's all because of Jesus Christ and, what his, and his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Now tonight, we're going to look at the very first problem that the Apostle Paul faced when he uh, addressed the young church in Corinth. And I, I think that is, it's very interesting how in many churches, uh, that is a lot of times, that is the, this is the very first issue that always comes up in a new church. And, and probably part of that is because it all stems down to we're human. We're all human beings. And there are some people that want, as uh, uh, one uh, the men in one of the early churches, he wanted to have the preeminence. He wanted to be in charge. And, uh, but then uh, some people did, as they said in the Old Testament, that which is pleasing, or they did that which was right in their own eyes, and so a lot of times that starts happening in, in churches and, in, and they don't follow their leader and they get out of sorts and they, then divisions take place. And this is the very first problem that the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul had to address this young gifted church. And all churches can, can have this problem if they're not careful. And it's the sin of division. And the Lord Jesus himself stated that a house divided against itself cannot stand. And so it's very important that we, when division comes, we get rid of the division. We s separate that division and uh, try and uh, squelch it as quickly as possible. Um, so tonight we're going to look at the problem of, dis of division. First of all, I want us to see the seriousness of the problem. Look at verse number 10. Verse number 10 there in chapter 1, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, I thought it was interesting he used a word here as he's getting ready to talk to them. He's not commanding them. Notice what the, the word is. Now I beseech you you know he could have said i command you but he didn't he said i beseech you and what is that word beseech you know that's a term of a, a desire an imploring it's almost begging you know one of the things you know as a pastor one of the things that i want the least in a church is divisions I don't want to have cliques. I don't want somebody, you know, a little group over here talking, a little group over here talking, a little group up there talking, a little group down here talking, and, uh, you know, never the twain meet. No, we're a church. We are a family. We're a family. And we're an assembly. We're a called-out assembly. That's what the, the beginning of this chapter talks about. And... Uh, so Paul, he's just, he says, I beseech you, I'm begging you. 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that ye speak of the same thing. Y'all be on the same page. And that there be no divisions. You know, he could have commanded, and he has done that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 35. He said, if any man think of himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. And what he's saying is, these things that I'm commanding you, you need to understand that I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. Well, that's pretty, pretty strong. That's pretty bold. But he said, here, he's just pleading. He's, he's, he's begging. So what is he pleading about? What is, his, what, is his, what is he beseeching about? Well, number one, the first thing here is he says, speak the same thing. Now, if we move over to, to ver- chapter 2, verse number 1 and 2, and he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So what are we, what are we supposed to, as a church family, what is, our, what is our main thing that we're supposed to be thinking about, speaking about? We're supposed to be the same thing. And that is that we know any, anything but Christ. Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know, when we talk, that's what we should talk about. And we should be comfortable talking about the Lord and what he has done in our lives and what he's doing in the lives of others. And we ought, that, is, that should be our conversation. Can we talk about fishing? Absolutely. But we should love to talk to one another about the Lord and what he's doing. You know, it's exciting to see God's working in our lives. And we need to share that with each other. And that's part of family. We share things together. And we should be speaking the same thing. The second thing, he says, of the same mind. In the same mind. Uh, Look at chapter 2 and verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. You think about that. We have the mind of Christ. What is it that you think about all the time? What is the main thing that you think about? Well, the main thing ought to be Christ. You say, well, I, I, you know, I got my job. You know, Brother Jim Phillips is here. He works for an air conditioning company selling... Is that what he is supposed to think about all the time? I almost guarantee you that when he clocks out at 5 o'clock, that's the last time he thinks of air conditioning until he gets in his car and, you know, if the air works in his car. I'm sure he thinks about air conditioning. But I, I venture to say that's the last time he thinks of a compressor or a thermostat until he has to clock in at 8 o'clock the next morning. See, that's, that's not something that's going to consume him, hopefully. We're to have the same mind as Christ. So the things that we think about are things of spiritual, uh, things that matter spiritually. And so we're to have the same mind. Then he goes on and he says the same judgment. I think this is another good verse. Look at uh, chapter 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. That's an interesting verse. And I want you to understand what he's talking about. You go back to what Jesus had to say back in the Sermon on the Mount. Judge not, lest you be judged. What was he saying there? You better be ready to be judged uh, if you're going to pass out judgment. And uh, that's what he's saying here. Uh, he that is spiritual judges all things. You know, in other words, we're, we're checking ourselves out and we're making sure that what we're doing in our life lines up with Christ. We're trying to be as spiritual as possible. We're not out there judging everybody else because if we'll judge ourselves and if we'll... We'll do our part to make sure that we're doing what we... Nobody can judge us. Nobody can judge us. I find it interesting that uh, most people that criticize a good Christian 
the reason they're criticizing them is because that good Christian is doing so much more spiritually than they are. Brother Vineyard, when I was in Bible college, one of the things he said over and over and over again was criticisms always aimed upward. Nobody ever criticizes somebody that's doing less than they are. It's always the way it is. And so we need to be of the same judgment. So Brother Jim's here. He needs to judge himself on his spiritual life. Brother Dennis needs to judge himself on his spiritual life. Brother Greg needs to judge himself on his spiritual life. Miss Kathy needs to judge herself on her spiritual life. Brother James needs to judge himself. Pastor Sutton needs to judge himself on his spiritual life. And if we'll judge ourselves, if we're we're, we're spending so much time judging ourselves, we don't have time to judge anybody else. You see where I'm going? You see what I'm saying here? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I, you know, just, you know, we got to pay attention to this. This is, this is good stuff here. And then the fourth thing, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, everything we do, we do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 11. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm begging you. In the name of the Lord, it would, there'd just be no division. Number two, I want us to see the silliness of the problem. And I think it's interesting. That Paul, I think Paul just, he goes, I cannot believe this. And, you know, and a lot of times with divisions in churches, it's over silliness. It's over the color of the carpet. It's over the color of the walls. It's over who's going to greet who at the door. It's over silly things a lot of times. And people get all divided over some of the silliest things. And here is one of those cases. Look at verse 11. For it hath been declared unto me of you. So in other words, what he's saying is somebody's told me this. My brethren. So he's talking to the Christians in this church at Corinth. He says, by them which are of the house of Chloe. So, you know, he, he's not one of those that says, well, you know, Pastor, you know what they're saying. Well, who's they? Well, you know, Pastor, it's, you know, they're saying this about. No, no, no. Paul says, by them which are of the house of Chloe. He said, this is who's saying it. Man, that, I, that's pretty bold. I like it. That there are contentions among you. Well, I'll tell you what, people would have a heart attack if, if the pastor got up and started naming names. But yet they want to just do all of their little, you know, maneuvering and they want their divisions, they want to stir things up. Look what he says now. Now this I say. That every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Lest any should say that I baptized in mine own name, and I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any others. He said, I can't remember if I baptized anybody else. So they were divided into factions. Actually, they were divided into four different factions. The first one was Paul. They were pr probably, perhaps, the Gentiles among the church. And then you had Apollos. Now, Apollos was an eloquent speaker. And so there were those that they liked Apollos because he was such a pulpiteer. Well, that's great. And then there was those that followed Peter. And that was perhaps the Jews in the church followed Peter. And then there were those that they followed Christ, rejecting all human leadership. You know, that's where we're, we're, we're all supposed to be following Christ. Just reject all the human leadership. Just 
follow Christ. I want you to understand looking at men is useless. I mentioned this morning there's a lot of great men of God that influenced my life. And that's, that's where it ends. I don't worship them. They just, they influenced me. I don't go around saying, well, I'm of John R. Rice. That's foolish. No, I'm of Christ. I follow him. Look, look at what he goes on to say in this passage. He says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you. So, Christ was not divided. It says it right there. He, it, Paul says, is Christ, is Christ divided? No, he was not divided. And by the way, Paul wasn't crucified. So, Paul didn't die for your sins. Christ died for your sins. And, and, and not, none of them were baptized in a man's name. When we baptize up there in the baptistry, we baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Not by anybody's name. Not by anybody other's name. Not by any preacher's name. No, we ba we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because baptism is a picture of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ. So you're understanding here the silliness of this problem. Now, let's just look at the, the solution to the problem. How do you solve the problem? Well, look at verse number seven, 17, 1 Corinthians 1, 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So what are we supposed to do? We're to focus on the gospel. Now, I, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a uh, big, I'm not big on that word focus. It's not a biblical term. The, uh, the word focus is not found in the Bible. But this, you know, here in the context of this, this is what we're supposed to be looking at or, or standing firm on, and that is the gospel. So what is the gospel? Well, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 3, the Bible says, Therefore I delivered unto you, first of all, that I, which, uh, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the gospel. So everything we do should bring people to the point where they realize that Jesus died for them. He was buried, and he rose again, proving that one day we can rise as well. Because he, if he has the power over death, he can raise us from the dead as well. So we need to focus on the gospel. We need to focus on that man is sinful and is anger to holy God. You know, in order for a person to get saved, they have to first know that they're lost. They have to realize that they are sinful. And because of their sin, they have angered a holy God. But they also need to understand that God sent his only begotten son. By the way, not his one and only son. No, his only begotten son. To be our sacrifice for our sin. You know, because we're sinners, because we, we sin, we have to pay the penalty for sin. Somehow, we have to pay for our sin. But God allowed his son to die in our place for our sin. He took the sin of the whole world on himself. And our penalty for our sin, the wages of our sin, was paid by Christ when he died on the cross. 
Then he rose again, forgiving sins. See, if he had just died, it wouldn't have been complete. But he had to rise again, and he did rise again. And because of that, our sins are forgiven. Our past sins are forgiven. Our present sins are forgiven. Our future sins are forgiven. So when God looks at us, he sees us through the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. And he looks at us as if we had never sinned. We need to focus on the person of Jesus Christ. We need to focus on the person of Jesus Christ. God manifest himself in the flesh. God in the flesh. What a, an amazing... I, I, I would have loved to have been on this earth 2,000 years ago as Jesus walked this earth. I hope I would have had the faith to follow him. You know, it, I, it would have just been an amazing experience. You think about it. God in the flesh. At, at Christmas time, I, I think about when Jesus was born. In that stable. And I don't know, it might have been in the middle of the night. We, we, we say it was in the middle of the night because there was a star in the sky. We assume some things. But I get to thinking about Joseph. As he delivers this child and he holds God in his hands. The first man to ever hold God in his hands. Can you imagine what that must have been like? I don't even know if he really grasped the awesomeness of that. I get cold chills every time I think about it. Just being able to hold God in your hands. And Joseph got to do that. You know, he was the Lamb of God. The Bible talks about him being the Lamb of God. And uh, all through the, New Te or the Old Testament, a lamb had to be shed, a perfect lamb had to be shed for the remission of sin. And it had to be done over and over and over again. But when Jesus, the perfect, the most perfect lamb, died on the cross and shed his blood, it was done once for all. It's over. All of that is over. All of the sacrifices was over. The, the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. And we could now enter into the Holy of Holies. What an awesome thought that is. You know, when we go to the Lord in prayer, we, we don't realize how much we have. We don't realize how, what we've got. And we can come boldly before the throne of God. I, I was reading the other day uh, in the life of uh, Esther. And uh, just, you know, you couldn't walk into the king unless he raised his scepter and invited you in. You didn't go there unannounced you had to go there by invitation and uh, we don't have to go by invitation to before the throne of God we can come boldly anytime we want it's it's amazing I, I was laying in bed this morning I woke up about 4 30 in the morning and I was laying there and I was thinking I can actually come boldly to the Lord and I don't have to wait on him to come, ask me to come in no matter where I'm at, no matter what time it is, I can call on the Lord. You know, He became sin for us. I can't even fathom what that must have been like as He hung on the cross, as He begged God to forgive them because they knew not what they were doing. All that he went through, he became sin for us. As he died there on the cross for us. But the, the glorious thought is, is three days later he rose from the grave. And he is sitting today at the right hand of the Father. I made re reference this morning to uh, Stephen. And as he was being stoned, he said, I see the Son of God, standing at the right hand of God. What a thought that is. 
because he is risen, he is now at the right hand of God the Father, and the blessed hope is that he is coming again. And I'm looking forward to that day. And you know, as I look at all that's going on in our country, and I realize that we, we have a very limited viewpoint, a, a world viewpoint a lot of times, and we think because we're getting a little persecution, you know, the folks up there in Michigan or out in California and, and Oregon and Washington, you know, the churches are getting a little persecution up there. Oh, we think this is really bad and, you know, it's the end times. It may not be the end times, but it might be the end times. And one of the things that I know is Jesus is coming soon. And this is a really good opportunity for him to come. But he is coming again. We need to have the right focus. You know, we need to focus on the gospel. We need to focus on the person of Jesus Christ. But we need to have the right focus on the message. Not the messenger. See, the reason there's divisions in churches today is they start focusing on the messenger instead of the message. We need to have the right focus on the gospel, not the evangelist. You know, an evangelist, he's, he, he's got it made. He comes in, tears up the church, and leaves. But don't fo focus on that. Focus on the gospel. Focus on the person of Jesus Christ, not the personality of the preacher. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. You ought to turn there and look at this verse. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. And this is what focus really means. It says there, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So until the day Jesus comes, give attendance to these three things. Give attendance to reading, read the Word of God. Somebody told me one time, Pastor, you just use way too many scriptures in your preaching. Well, that's what I'm preaching, is the Word of God. So give attendance to reading. See, that's where my, my authority comes from. It comes from the Word of God. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from my Bible college that I went to. It comes from the Word of God. Give attendance to reading. Give attendance means focus on reading. You read. That's why I encourage people to bring their Bible to church. Bring your Bible to church. Sit there. Turn in your Bible to the Scriptures. Make full proof. Make sure I'm, what I'm saying is coming from the Word of God. To exhortation. Focus on the exhortation. That's one of the things that I have to do. I have to exhort you to do things for God. I'm going to bring it from the Word of God and give it to you. That is what my job is. That's what the, the whole purpose of preaching is, is to exhort. Preach the Word. Be in season, instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering. And let me tell you something. There are times where, you know, you think, does anybody get what I'm trying to say? And, you know, there are times where I'm, I get myself to the point where, how can I say it more clearly to where they get it? But I want to exhort with all long suffering. You know, I'm going to take my time. I don't get frustrated when people don't get it. We just keep going. We just keep giving it to you, just as, you know, until we get it. To doctrine. The 
problem in America today, and the reason why so many people are blown from one thing to another, can't find a church that they're satisfied with, jump from one church to another, to another, to another, to another, is because of doctrine. They don't know doctrine. And so when the preacher preaches on something that they don't agree with, they move on. Now, let's turn that around just a little bit. There are some times where you get in a church where the preacher starts teaching another doctrine that's not found in the Word of God. Or they twist the doctrine. Then you need to move on. But we need to, till the Lord comes, give attention. Pay close attention to the reading, to the exhortation, and to doctrine. See, we need to know what we believe. And I hope that over the last year and a half, you have sensed that my heart's desire is to teach you, to help you learn the Word of God, to know the doctrine of the Word of God. And that's why I, I like going through a whole book just in a series like this. So we're not just picking and choosing stuff. We're going to just what the Word of God, thus saith the Lord, and just go by what the Lord has to say. You know, if we're all on the same page and we're keeping our eyes on Jesus, and I, it's interesting that that verse just continues to come out today, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If we just look at Jesus, it's going to help us, and it will unite us as a church. And that's my heart desire. I hope that's your heart's desire as well. That there be no division. That we all have the same mind, and that mind is the mind of Christ. Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for what we've been able to learn here tonight. And Lord, we're thankful that Paul had to deal with the situation there in the church at Corinth. They might be our example to help us to be more like what we ought to be. And Lord, my prayer is for Southwood Baptist Church to be a united church. Not have any divisions. Not have any factions or fractions. But just have the mind of Christ. Be of the same mind one to, or not to another. The same purpose. The same goal. keeping our eyes on you. Would you bless in this invitation time, Lord, if you've spoke to hearts, maybe there's someone here that's listening, that they realize they've been listening to division. They've been listening to the wrong things, the wrong people. Lord, they need to get things right with you. I pray that even tonight they'd get down there beside their couch, bow their head there at their kitchen table, wherever they're at, and just confess that to you, forsake it. And move on. Would you bless your people in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed, our eyes closed. For the dentist is playing a verse of invitation. If God spoke to your heart. You need to do business with God. Now's a good time to do it. Maybe you've been listening to folks that are stirring. Causing discord among the brethren. Me just encourage you to forsake that and confess that that is sin. Just listening to it is sin. You need to confess that, forsake it. And just move on. Brother Dennis is going to play another verse. I feel like folks need a little more time.
Father, thank you for speaking to hearts tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just bless Southwood Baptist Church. Lord, I love these people. And I want what's best for them. And Lord, I think these folks love you. I really believe it. And I pray that you would just unite us together for one purpose, and that is the gospel's sake cause of Christ. Help us to move forward by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as we normally do on Sunday night, we have testimony time, and if God's done something in your life and you want to share a word of testimony, now's a good time to call us. You can call us at 850-408-4177, or you can call at 901-569-1936. And let me encourage you, if the Lord's doing something in your life, has done something in your life, you just want to praise the Lord about it, you know, the Bible tells us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And uh, let people know what God is doing. And, you know, uh, it's so important to give word of testimony uh, about the goodness of God. You know, I had the privilege, Kim and I went to... uh, Cypress Creek Baptist Church on Thursday night and uh, had the privilege of preaching for Brother uh, Matt Spencer over there. And uh, that's my testimony. So I'm going to let Miss Mary Pace give a word of testimony. Miss Mary? Yes, sir. There we go. You're in. We can hear you well. Go ahead. I just want to thank the Lord that... um this afternoon, I got a call from my brother who's in Panama City, and everyone where he's at is doing fine, and they're all well, and he's doing good. And I just thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for his blessings on us. And uh, I thank the Lord that we might be back in church Wednesday night. It's a Amen. good thing. And thank you. Amen. Good night. Thank you, Miss Mary. Thanks for calling in. Anyone <laughs> else want to call? And you just call right ahead. And uh, anyway, last Thursday night, we went over there to Kynard, uh, Florida, out in the middle of nowhere. And you know, one of the things that I noticed, all of the pine trees were leaning the last time we went, last year. And this year, they're standing up a little bit, looking a little better. And uh, praise the Lord for that. And I know folks over there are thankful that the Lord is allowing things to get back to somewhat normal over there. What a blessing it was to preach to his people, a good little church in Kynard. And uh, Kynard is one of those places you don't pass through. You've got to go there on purpose because if you didn't know it was Kynard, you'd never know you were there. I don't even know if they've got a sign, but uh, uh, just a little community out there, and they had a good group of people on Thursday night that came for the service. Uh, he's doing Thursday nights of great preaching. Uh, he loved our Tuesday nights of great preaching, so he decided he was going to do Thursday night. And uh, so he did that for the month of May, and he's had different preachers come in for that. And uh, Lord willing, we're going to start our Tuesday nights of great preaching here soon. Um, just taking it a little slow and one step at a time here and getting back to uh, our normal routine. And uh, hopefully in the very new near future, we'll start our Tuesday nights of great preaching and have some different preachers come in um, hopefully in the next month so anyone else want to call in and give a word of testimony Uh, the Lord's done something for you and you're you just need to tell somebody about it you know it's interesting the Lord was good to a lot of folks and you were telling folks this morning in the service and it was it was just it was fun to see the fellowship again and uh, you know it's hard to get people to leave sometimes and that's okay uh, but uh, I, I'm just so thankful for the fellowship. And, uh, you know, this morning I'm thankful that uh, Miss Linda joined the church this morning. And uh, uh, that's a positive thing. Uh, thankful for the people that the Lord is bringing our way. And uh, so if you want to call in, we're going to give it a couple more minutes here. And uh, 
anyone that has a word of testimony. Anybody here that want in the building that wants to give a word of testimony, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, and uh, Brother Mack will be back in town. He's heading back uh, this week. He'll be back Thursday or Friday. So if you would pray for him uh, as he travels back. Uh, pray for Brother Jerry in uh, taking care of uh, his wife and sister-in-law and brother-in-law there at home and all that's going on with them. And uh, pray for the bachelors. Uh, the Lord will just give them strength each day. I love calling them and talking to them on the phone. And uh, they they were able to send some pictures in. You saw those in the videos today. And uh, they were able to do that. And just a, a real blessing. Uh, there's so many of our people, I wish I'd have known them about 30, 40 years ago when they were really in their prime and serving God. And, and uh, just so thankful for our people. We have wonderful people here at Southwood Baptist Church. Any, anyone else with a word of testimony? Well, let me remind you of Wednesday night. We will meet in person. The buildings will sanitize and get things ready for the service on uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You know, it's been a while since we've met together on a Wednesday night, so just to remind you, uh, at 7 o'clock we'll have the service. We'll, we'll have the doors open in the back, and you can come in that way. We've got another call coming in here, so here we go. Hello, this is Pastor Sutton, and who am I speaking with? Brandon. Go ahead. Thank, thank you for the message, Pastor Sutton, and thank you for letting us be at your church. Oh, bless you. We're so thankful for you being here. And uh, thanks for calling in. Okay. God bless you. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. And it must be Miss Rose because Brother Steve is here. <laughs> I want to thank the Lord for this morning that um, I felt so good that I could come to Sunday I mean, come to church, and I got to see everybody I haven't seen for two and a half months, and I want them to know I love them. And, yeah, we even love you, I reckon. But for the sake of uh, a short comment here, May the Lord bless each and every one in the church, and thank you. Thank you for the day. It was good. Wow. Even Dennis's songs moved my soul. It's been a while for that. But, yes, we thank him. Thank you. Well, God bless you, Miss Rose. We love you, love too. Love you. Bye. And uh, thank you for calling in. And uh, appreciate unique folks. <laughs> Is that a good word for you, Miss Rose? Unique. I like that. <laughs> well, God bless you. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye now. All right. Anyone else? Uh, now, Wednesday night, we'll meet here at 7, and uh, uh, we'll continue our series on uh, Stand Firm, and we're trying to encourage you to stand firm in what you know, you, and you know, just what we're preaching tonight and talking about tonight. In knowing the doctrines, knowing what the Word of God has to say, and live by it. Not just know it, but live it. And uh, so that's stand firm in the book of 1 Peter. And looking forward to that. And then let me just remind you on the 7th, uh, June 7th, on Sunday night, uh, the Commonwealth Baptist College Voices of Revival will be with us. And uh, group of good-looking young men and uh, so they'll be they're traveling through actually on the ninth they'll be down in uh, Fort Myers at, at Winkler Road Baptist Church for their Tuesday nights of great preaching and uh, they'll be over in Middleburg on Sunday morning and uh, on the seventh and then with us Sunday night so we're looking forward to having them with us as they travel through the state of Florida and uh, I'm glad they called us and wanted to come here and uh, Brother Jeff Fugit is the uh, pastor and uh, president of the college there, pastor of uh, Clays Mill Baptist Church in Lexington, and uh, doing a phenomenal work 
there in Lexington. And uh, I'm thankful for his friendship. All right, anyone else uh, with a word of testimony? And uh, going once. Brother Dennis doesn't have any calls coming in over there. Going twice. Well, sing with me. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Well, it's been a good day. part of the service this morning and thank you for being a part of the service tonight and uh, Lord willing we'll see you on Wednesday night for the in-person service and uh, we'll we'll talk to you in the morning around 10 o'clock Lord bless you and uh, you have a good evening